Alright guys, it's time for a very technical video. Uh, stay tuned, this is going to be something that a lot of you might misunderstand. So I'm going to try to take my time and explain it in a very simplistic approach. Okay, I've done this selfie camera for a reason with the computer right behind me because I'm going to show you stuff that kind of explains um, the real reason of why this all works. So I'm going to be covering how to read a turbo compressor map and what that means in a visual sense. Um, I have a feeling people have been misunderstanding that a turbo compressor map is a, a plateau, like a topographical map in a three-dimensional form. Let me show you what I mean. So, lucky for me, now we can do this. So previously on video stuff, we could never make um, any sort of cameras moving around. So when you look at a map view of a turbo, you'll see something like this, right? And let me just open a new tab real quick. We're gonna go G42. There we go. Go to Garrett's site. I could have had all this pre-opened for you guys. When you see this, this needs to be in your mindset. This is a peak of a mountain. This is the next layer down of that peak and the next layer down of that peak. This is a three-dimensional coming out to you, to the camera, the highest part of that mountain. And the closer these lines are to each other, so these lines are far, these lines are close. The closer these are to each other, that dictates the slope, the steepness of that side of the mountain. So we're going to go back to our topographic map here. Okay, this is what we've been using for map telemetry forever. So just like this mountain range here, here's a peak, and then it slopes away. Then we go here, and here's a really good visualization of a three-dimensional view of that. So if we've got this peak right here, this is our peak right here. The next slope down at the next height is this next plateau region right here. And just, you can see the elevation change based on this. Okay, so notice how these are further apart. These are close together. Steep slope, see? Now we're gaining more elevation quickly. So, I know I don't have the time to do this sort of stuff, but for each of these compressor maps, if you can imagine us doing the same sort of thing, we've got this big, big, big central top ridge here, and then it very quickly, almost like a square, falls off uh, with a slope. And so that gets you there. Um, Another thing is pressure ratios are seemingly calculated incorrectly, especially for compound turbo setups. So you're going to have atmospheric. So let's say, let me grab a little notepad and show you guys this. Atmospheric stuff. We'll just kind of put this out of the way here. Um, is your atmospheric pressure, 14.7, plus your boost pressure expected, divided by atmospheric, so 1.544 in that one example. Um, let's say, for instance, you are at 20 PSI. 20 plus 14.7 divided by 14.7 is your pressure ratio. Very, very simple concept. It'll tell you where you're going in your vertical axis. Okay. The airflow calculation stuff, this is something that we get from our sensors on the vehicle. Mass airflow sensor is not going to be used on a turbocharged system, so it's not going to be that. But you're going to have some variance of fuel going in, and you're going to have the wideband's output, and then you back calculate that to see the airflow coming in. And then you're also having to normalize based on turbo compressor outlet temperature. Um, 
an exhaust back pressure and you can overall see what the mapping is of the turbo itself. So you'll see a line coming up as you gain boost. And if you're maintaining boost, it's going to go across that line. So I know we're covering a lot of stuff. I know it's a, a lot of complex theories in one relatively short video, but I wanted to give you guys a visualization of how you're supposed to understand this because the main mistake people will make, so actually let's go to another thing. Uh, here's one right here. I'm doing a turbo design kit right now and Garrett designed exactly what I've been asking for, <laughs> which is amazing. It never happens. So if we compare, for instance, this turbo to something like map to something like this. Hope this doesn't screw me up. So we'll see here, these guys were smart enough to map airflow best based on what they're getting for fuel per a given RPM point, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of these VW forums that make this stuff, the guys are brilliant. They're, they're very on top of their stuff. Um, so you can see the overall shape of this curve. So these spacings are very, very wide. This is likely a 60% cutoff. This is likely somewhere around 74 to 76% total efficiency. And then it falls away. So you're probably getting 4% per step. Um, but if you see here, this is a turbo that I'll be replacing. The maximum flow, if we were to take this line here, where the turbo is now starting to overspeed and go draw down, it's about 57 pounds a minute, 56 pounds a minute. Now, we look at the surge line, let's say we're pressure ratio of 2.5. We go across here, and we're gonna be hitting the surge line at right about 22 pounds of minute or pounds of air per minute. We're gonna go to this new one that I just specced out. We're gonna go back to our 2.5, and what are we at? 22. So this turbo will come online without surging at the same point. The other one ran out of steam at 56. Look at what this thing's doing at 56. This has a ton of room left before overspeeding the turbo. And it has just a significant increase in what the application is for. Um, so when I go to spec out turbos for you guys, which I do this every day, nonstop, this is what I do. Besides tuning, this is the bread and butter um, of Red Brain Design. So this is, again, we're surging, perfect surge line at the same position at a much smaller turbo, but then this thing somehow carries out to 68 pounds. And for the application, we're going to have an efficiency gain peak, probably somewhere about 5%, but an average probably over 12%, which is just huge. So, um, the total power output, probably about 15, 20% over, but the area under the curve is going to be massive, massive gain. We're talking like 35, 40%. So really looking forward to this one. It's a custom project and it was a turbo that I was unexpected to get. And it just kind of popped up in the market and I said, I want it. That's exactly what I needed because I was going to make a custom version of this. And uh, thank, thank you, Garrett, for making it right, <laughs> making it exactly what I needed. But hopefully this gives you guys an idea of how to read these maps. Again, closer together is a steeper slope. Further apart is a softer slope, just like we're seeing right here. 
fantastic topographic explanation. And again, these are used for everything. So we're getting what you're seeing on the map and a three-dimensional version of that below. So I hope that helps a lot of you guys out. Um, I'm more than happy to go over specifics on uh, turbocharger design. I can sell you all these products now. I just marketed with a, a team to now I have ECU stuff. I have pretty much everything you can imagine. Look, dirty clothes. <laughs> I work too much. So uh, those are all clean, by the way. I have everything we need for ECU stuff. Um, of course, I can get turbo stuff, fuel systems, um, ignition systems. So everything that you can think that you need for your car, I'm now working in a dealer network to have access to all of that for you. So now I can kind of move forward and pretty much help more people. That's the, the bottom line. Previously, I was having to divide a lot of my attention to say like, go to so-and-so, I trust them for this. And then they, they go jump to one person, to the next person, to the next person. And it was very frustrating for them. So I'm now becoming a one-stop shop. Um, and I think that a lot of you will appreciate that because now you're getting it all. You're, you're getting the experience, the insight to why I choose certain products for projects. And um, I think that that's overall going to be a benefit to most of you. And that's, that's the whole point of doing this. So um, reach out if you have any questions on turbo compressor maps, um, turbo design, and overall usage for your vehicle, because this is what I do. So another one for Red Brain Design, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.